my hair mm, just needs a wash needs to be cleaner um okay so that's it really uh thanks you guys for watching really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart if there's anything that oh that's right no i'm not going yet give me a second pencils that's right i wanted to actually swatch these on the back of my hand before i let you go um because some people might be like oh how how good are they like you haven't really used all of them you've only used a couple in this The length of the skirt is just above my knee. Actually, now that I'm standing up, yeah, it's kind of kind of just above my knee. <laughs> I really seem to like skirts that are just above my knee or slightly lower, not really long ones. I used to. I used to have a stage when I would prefer really long flowing skirts and now I don't. So it's an interesting change. But um, anyway, I like the fact that it's just the one colour but it's got... A little bit of crinkle in it so it's not just a straight out flat skirt it's got a bit of flare in it um, and uh, yeah uh, I probably wouldn't put a top with it that has too much pattern because um, it's already quite bold the skirt is like what I call a fiery red almost orange but not quite as you can tell from the video, today I did a makeup look on Facebook as a live video and then I basically got on with the rest of my day. Celeste and I went for a walk which was lovely but it wasn't a long walk and the weather wasn't really hot. It was, you know, further on in the afternoon, evening almost. <laughs> it's actually <clears throat> this time right now. Uh, it's 6.17. Not sure if you can see that, but uh, yeah, that's the time it is, and I'm going to be getting on with my manifesting because I find that doing that, you know, on an occasional basis really does help things smoothly transition in my life. I also want to mention it's not really, um, I don't want it to be seen as bad news. But um, one of the people in my, you know, close to our family, I've been told that we don't know how much longer she has left to live. And she's had a really great life and I've met her multiple times, you know, in different stages of my life. So she knew what was going on with us and she was very close to my mum and dad and I would call her an auntie. She I believe is in an old people's home and she's been well looked after so that's always really good but it sounds like she doesn't want to leave and see anybody anymore. Coming to terms with it is just different for me. I didn't feel upset when I heard the news. I actually didn't have any emotion. I've been like that ever since, you know, every time I've had someone that I knew of pass away or like they weren't so well, I haven't really taken it as bad news. I just want to be able to focus on the good times that we had together. And I don't really know how to respond to that. So you know how they, people talk about different ways of grieving. I think my way of grieving is 
I just take my time to process what's been going on, but I don't jump to conclusions and think the worst for somebody. <laughs> Here I am just letting you guys know that this is a piece of news that's been shared to me and I'm taking it in and I just really want to remember the really great times that we had together and I don't know if I've actually talked to you guys on here about my dad and I'm talking about what happened months before things I'd say went downhill is that he wasn't doing so well and I was living in Canberra at the time he and my mum were in Perth And I knew, like I knew that I'd heard it from my mum and I'd heard it from my sister, what was going on. And if you know my family, I think my mum has this personality that she likes to see the good in everything. And then my sister is more about this is realistic and re realistic can actually be hurtful for people. And so they had both told me in different ways, bless you, that dad's lung had, I'm going to say collapsed, my dad's lung. And that was not nice for him, but it didn't occur to me that there was more to it than that. Like I just thought, okay, he's, you know, there's a dysfunction in his body and um, I would just continuously tell myself that everything was all right. And I still kind of have that mentality when I hear that someone is not doing so well. And it's not like I'm avoiding it either. Like I know what's going on, but I'm not going to be focusing on what is wrong. And my dad had cancer quite a few times. So for us, it was not new to find out that he had it again, maybe the second or third time. And my response to him having this was that I just was hoping that he could fight it because he'd done it before so why couldn't he do it again and it was hard for me with my dad because I'd had this vision in my head that our family would last forever as in physically like we would always be together, my mum, my dad, my sister and I, the four of us would always, you know, live a really long and happy life. And I think that's probably why I've been reading books and getting a bit of knowledge about the secret to a long and happy life because, you know, I believe you can have it if that's what you really want. And life does surprise us. We don't always expect things to happen and it's our way of responding to it makes us who, who we are. And so with my aunt, she is probably doing the best she can. I did phone call her, leave her a voice message and let her know that we love her and care for her and hope that she's, you know, being looked after and she's looking after herself and loving herself because I really didn't know what else to say.
Okay. Does Mummy need to uh, manifest with your help? Does she? Do I need help? Ow! <laughs> oh, it's the hair grabbing situation. Oh my gosh, you grab Mummy's hair. Right in front of me, I've got all the bottles separated into different parts as I've needed to sterilize them for Celeste's next feeds. I like to try and be a little bit organized and clean for her so that she keeps healthy. And it does actually feel good to get it all ready. <laughs> 